here we are on PubMed. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Orby Dingwall. I'm Christine Nielsen. And we're going to take you through the exciting world of how to search PubMed. <laughs> Very exciting. After the long weekend. So we just want to go over a couple of quick intro things. If you've uh, been to our webinars before, you know we uh, cover just some basics, which is first, need um, the go to webinar um, box to ask us questions or to adjust your settings. Um, you can click on the blue flower icon you'll find at the bottom of your screen. If you can't find that, then you'll see a little um, orange box with a white arrow in it. Click on that and your menu should reappear. And you can uh, ask us questions in the question box. We absolutely welcome them. Um, both your questions and any comments you might have, and you just type those right in. So by the end of today's session, we you will be able to describe MyNet's core services, uh, recognize the key features um, and the new interface in PubMed. You'll be able to create a search strategy and also um, order full text articles. So what is MyNet? MyNet stands for Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network, and it's a service that the University of Manitoba Libraries provides to Manitoba Health, uh, fee-for-service physicians in Manitoba, and staff in the participating regional health authorities. Um, but anyone is welcome to our webinars, so if you enjoyed this one today or you're interested in upcoming ones and you want to spread the word, by all means do that. We're a small team here. Um, Christine and I are the primary librarians. Gail is also one of the librarians. And Cheryl is our front line, uh, is our front line. So if you're calling or requesting articles or having trouble with your library card, um, Cheryl is the one that connects you. So if you don't already have a MyNet library card and you are eligible for one, we strongly encourage you to register for one. It just helps um, for when you need our services um, just to have it as a just in time so it's it's ready in there for when you need it and we have our four core services which is if you need more info, if you attend today's session and you're like searching pubmed is not for me please can you just do it for me absolutely we will not PubMed, but all of the other resources that we have access to uh, we will send you any full text documents so if you love searching on your own and you are often hitting that paywall that says, please pay us $50 for this article. Don't ever do that. We will send you the article. Uh, we can help you set up current awareness alerts and stay connected with the information that you want to know as it's coming out. And we do training and education uh, sessions like this one. Um, our, we offer these sorts of ones monthly. We'll also happily custom sessions to uh, questions that you have or to if you're having um, team meetings or doing some education within your teams, happy to create those sessions. And also um, there is a provincial license for the clinical resource up to date. So if you don't know about that, uh, make sure you check out our website for more information. So that is the very, very quick overview. And to get us started into PubMed itself, I'm gonna launch a poll and and of course that always makes my screen go all weird um and we're just asking what is your level of experience using pubmed uh and this just helps us to um sort of uh go through some of some features maybe a bit faster or some a little bit slower and it looks like we've got a lot of people who are brand new to pubmed or who don't have a lot of confidence and some of you um are using PubMed all the time. So that is awesome. And I also want to thank you everybody for completing that. Okay, so almost half of us brand new to PubMed, welcome. Um, if there was something here that you were really hoping we were gonna cover, please pop that in the question box so that we do make sure that we will cover it. Um, so what is PubMed? PubMed, first and foremost, it's free. So that's awesome. You can search it anywhere, anytime, and you don't need to worry about a login. Um, it comes out of the United States National Library of Medicine. 
It's got over 5,000 um, high quality peer reviewed journals going back to about 1950. The emphasis is on North America, but it does have global coverage. And um, we've listed some of the subject areas here. It's the it's one of the best, if not the best starting places when you're searching for health information. Um, it's, it's really great. Um, so in the spring of 2020, um, because there was nothing else better to do, they launched a new version of PubMed. Um, and it is still, they're still sorting out some of the bugs. They're still making improvements. There's still features that were in the old PubMed that people need in the new PubMed. So it's still changing all the time. Um, and sometimes these changes happen without warning. So we always give, so if you log in and it looks different one day or you did something and you're trying to do it again, just be wary that um, uh, if you did imagine it used to do something else or that it, uh, it didn't do something else and now it does, that's why. Okay, I'm going to exit out of the screen and we're going to go live to PubMed here. Christine, are you still seeing it okay? You bet. Awesome. So um, there is at the top, this has been new since about April um, and it's just about uh, COVID-19 information. So if that's of interest to you, they've got this up here at the top. If you're interested in non-COVID stuff, you can just click out of this. So we're not going to focus specifically on uh, COVID today. And I'm just, great. Just gonna pull up my other notes here. So right in the middle of the page is the search box. So nice and easy, similar to Google, this is where you put in your search terms. If you are more interested in the advanced search box, an advanced, you don't have to be an advanced searcher to use it. It just means it's a little bit more sophisticated than a single search box. So you could click on that. And then if you scroll down, um, there's some really handy, um, handy links here. And so one is um, PubMed has a lot of really great FAQs, user guides, tutorials. So if you're looking for more information after today's intro, this is a, another really great spot to go to. If you're interested in really clini clinical um, things, the clinical queries is good. There's also another link here to the advanced search. If you know, um, if you know the information, like if somebody told you, oh, there's, um, oh, somebody says they can't see the screen sharing. And, but, and Christine, you're seeing it okay, right? Sorry, I was muted. Oh, okay. um, I, I do see it. Um, is anyone else not seeing the the screen share? If you could just type it in the question box, that would be handy. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I'll just, um, Christine will monitor that and I'll just um, keep going. And uh, so yeah, clinic, oh, single citation. That's if somebody told a really great article um and you know a little bit of the information about it you can use this to get straight to that there's also the mesh database um, that goes through the medical subject headings that's over here and then scrolling down a little bit further are trending articles and also the latest literature now this may be really of interest to you um or not and uh you can just uh but it, if it is of interest like the new articles or um, these sort of new articles that lots of different people are reading, um, then these are a great place. So we're going to do a search. And um, if there's something that you want us to search for, you can pop that into the question box too. I'm going to type in um, just a really simple, the concept of using honey in wound care. So I hit enter or I can click on the search box. And, oh, I had some, I had had some, um, I was doing a, <laughs> I was doing a test before we started. So I'm going to reset those. Okay, so here's my search term at the top. And then as I scroll down, it tells me there are 290 results. And on the left hand side, then is a little bit of information about these. So you can see this uh, graph that shows when the information was published, 
So a little bit more recently, and then a couple of dips. And so I look and I think, gosh, now some of you will say 290, that's a small amount of information. Others may say, oh my gosh, where do I even start? So depending on what you're looking for, you can then come over to the left-hand side and say, okay, well, I'm only interested in reviews. I just want a little bit of information about this. I want kind of a review. I want a summary. And um, I often limit to um, English if I'm the one reviewing the results because English is the only language that I, I read. And also we might say, I'm only interested in things from the last five years. Now, depending on what you're searching for will depend on um, what kind of filters, if any, you want to do. But now I'm down to 15 results. So that's a little small. And so I might say, okay, I, I 290 was too many, 15 is too small. I can just say, instead of saying care, I can just say honey and wounds, and I'll type that in. And you'll notice as I'm, as I'm typing, um, that uh, PubMed was prompting me for common, um, common search terms. That can be really helpful, especially if you're not sure how to spell one of the words, or if, you're, if your typing skills aren't always super accurate, often it's easier just to click than it is to keep typing. So now those same um, filters are still applied. So review, last five years in English, and, um, and I now have 71 results. So if I'm just kind of looking over at how many results are over here, uh, the blue here is the title. Underneath are always the author names. Then is the journal information. And uh, then is a little bit of the abstract. There's also here this PMID. That means that every article in PubMed has its own identification number. So this is often helpful if you're requesting articles or if you just wanna communicate information to us really quickly, um, you can pop us that PubMed ID. And as long as you're absolutely certain that you've copied all of those numbers, um, then that's a really fast way instead of uh, copying all of that information. So I can also, if I look up here, um, currently these are sorting so that I list results first, I can change my display options. So if I don't want to have to, if I want abstracts, I can change from summary to abstract. I can change um, uh, how it's sorted. So if I want it sorted by, uh, by author or by um, publication date or by journal, there are different ways that you can search. And you can also increase how many are are set um, or how many display for each page. So these are just like really quick ways that you can um, navigate. Oh, it didn't like that. And of course now it's it's uh, slowly, slowly changing that display. One of the, well, the, oh, there we go. I was gonna say while that was loading, I can also, you can see here that sometimes it'll say free PMC article. So that's PubMed Central. Those, that's um, a repository of open access um, publications. And you can also limit. So if you are doing something and we appreciate that our service has very fast turnaround for full text articles, but if you're doing something and you need those full text right away, or if you're just looking for a starting point and sometimes you like to just kind of um, click into the, uh, the full text, that free full text link, and it will provide you um, uh, the ones that are available for free. So that is really good. And uh, then we can see now that we've got the whole abstract and we can see, oops, and it's flipping around and we can see the keywords. So that is really great. If I click into this, so if I click on the title, and I scroll down, you can also see then at the bottom, um, it does provide some references and it provides us more information here about the publication types. Now this is a new article. Um, often it will also display the subject headings. So if you find an article and you're like, oh, I want more just like this, often I'm um, scrolling down and, and getting into the, the headings that can be helpful as well. 
So that's sort of the really, really high level basic overview about just like really quick and dirty searches in PubMed. Um, there are, you can, you can get into really complicated searches and Christine's gonna level us up a little bit, but at the very least, you absolutely can go to pubmed.gov, you can pop some search, search terms into that search box and you can use some quick little filters to help you find um, some introductory uh, information. Now, if I come back here and I come to the clinical queries. Sorry, Orvi, before you before yeah. you jump in, um, we've just had a question, and I thought okay. I would interrupt, yeah. um, about whether you need to log in. So Ooh, I thought great. I would pass that on, because other people might be interested in that as well. Sure. So um, you do not have to log in. And actually, if you look up in the top right-hand side, I am not currently logged in. So you can use it without logging in. Um, and they are in the process of updating their logins and stay tuned for more information from Christine and I about that. Um, it's, it's helpful to log in. You can set your, um, you can set your criteria. Like I like to, instead of having to, I like to see my abstracts. I like my keywords, the search terms I've done highlighted. I like them sorted in a certain way. Um, and so I can set in my account. So all of those things happen. I can also say I'm affiliated with the University of Manitoba. Please let me link directly to their resources. You can do that. Um, but if you don't want to have an account or you're just kind of learning or that kind of thing, you don't have to worry about it. You can just search without having an account. Okay, so clinical queries, um, as it's as we can see here, it says um, the these searches are specific to clinical research areas. So PubMed includes everything. Um, and this is uh, by them offering this clinical element. It's to try to have things that are if you're dealing if you're dealing with patients on the front line or dealing with um, really clinical things uh, opposed to like policy or background research or what have you. Um, this is this can be a really great tool. So um, and they have recently changed. Of course, one of those changes that's uh, that's new is um, sort of unsurprisingly, there is a whole section now about COVID-19, and so that's now on the one side. And then there's more just like clinical study categories. So I'm going to do a different um, search term. I won't search for honey and wound care this time. This time I'm going to search for diabetic. I'm going to I'm going to search for diabetic foot, and I'm going to say and elderly or seniors. Oops, seniors. And I think I have. There we go. Okay, so just a little quick search, and oh, and there are some COVID articles. So there's, you know, um, five of eight results are listed there. And over here in the more general, so if you were list interested in like diabetic foot and seniors and, um, and how it relates with COVID-19, um, then this is a really quick way to do that. And over on the clinical studies category, then there's almost 2000 here. So if there's 2000 here, there's even more in PubMed. Um, and you can change what the category is. So there's therapy, clinical prediction guides, diagnosis, etiology, and prognosis. And you can change the scope between broad and narrow. So these tend to be more um, clinically focused. And again, if you, uh, you know, you're, you're playing around in here, and if, I mean, if you're finding what you're looking for, that's great. But if you're not, you are always eligible to send us a message and just say, hey, I need a literature search um, on, this, on this thing. We are happy to pick up and uh, continue doing that search for you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and I'm gonna hand it over to Christine. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if I have mm -hmm. the power, uh, okay. I think I have just transferred the power to you, and yes. Here we go. Okay, so um, you should all now see a slide with text as opposed to PubMed itself. Is that what you see, Orvi? Sure is. Wonderful. So um, 
sometimes you just want to do like a quick and dirty search and find something and that's great um if you can find what you need then that's perfect other times you want to be a little more um thorough and deliberate so i'm going to talk a little bit about that um so when we talk about um something that's a bit more thorough uh, a lot of times we talk about defining your search question and there are different ways um that you know people kind of operationalize this um, there's some some little tricks here you might have heard of pico right where you have your population your intervention your comparison and your outcome uh, but there's others as well so there's one called spice so um, s stands for setting you know p is your perspective or population i is your intervention c is comparison and e is evaluation um, and basically all this all this is trying to just get at um, identifying the components of your question right so that the pieces that you can look for so for my example i am going to look at something covidy um, but i'm not going to use the um okay sorry my my screen was getting a little little funky here um so but i'm not going to use that that nifty covid box i'm going to i'm going to do this uh, myself so in my my example here i'm interested about uh harm reduction programs um during covid and particularly uh relating to people who are experiencing homelessness right so for this one uh pico is not so suitable but for the spice um i can say that you know i've got my setting with covid 19 pandemic we've got our population and we've got the intervention right and it's okay that you know you don't have to fill out the entire um chart if you want um you can you can do a subset of the pieces and sometimes um that's that's really all you need like if you get too specific sometimes it's hard to find things so um if you've you've got that kind of narrowed down you need to come up with search terms right i mean covid that's that's pretty straightforward um there are a few different ways you can talk about covid um i've identified here covid19 so the actual illness and then the sars cov2 which is the thing that causes the illness but like if you're talking about uh people who are experiencing homelessness um there are all kinds of terms you can use and i've, I've got a, a bunch here you might have some um that you can think of in addition to things like like unstable housing underhoused um, precarious housing, homeless, homelessness, et cetera. Um, but we're, I'm gonna stick with these uh, for now. Uh, I also got my third on the far right, which is the harm reduction concept, right? So we've got harm reduction, we've got supervised consumption is another way to talk about harm reduction. Um, and I just like to, to kind of take a, a second and point out, like I like, to, I like to remind people, we're not looking for articles. Okay, we're looking for records that describe articles and people use different language to describe the same thing, right? So this is what this exercise is intended to help us with. Uh, for the harm reduction piece, we might want to go a little bit broader depending on, on uh, how specific we want to be, right? So we might talk about um, people who use drugs, people who inject drugs, substance use, which could be um, drugs or alcohol or, or you know, what have you. Um, but once we've kind of kind of nailed down what we think our search terms are going to be, we can we can enter them into PubMed. And this is this is kind of the, the more complicated version of what Orvi was doing, right? So Orvi had some brackets. She had some some um, quotation marks, quotation marks, um, and she had an asterisk in there. So um, if anyone is, is unfamiliar with these things, that is not a problem. Um, I am actually going to, before we break it all down, I'm gonna start the next poll. We're gonna talk about Boolean operators. And I'm just trying to find the polls. Where'd they go? Here we go. Um, because Boolean operators are something that us in the library world talk about a lot when we do um, these searches. So quick, Quick question, what is a Boolean operator? It is a mechanism to narrow or broaden your search terms, or search results, I should say, in mathematical logic operators, and or or not, or all of the above. <laughs> okay, just give you a couple, couple seconds here to think about it.
Well, it looks like we've got some very informed participants today. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. All right. Um, only about half of you have voted, but I'm just in the interest of time. I'm going to shut this one down. Um, and the answer is really all of the above, right? So and, or, and not are examples of the operators themselves, and we use them to expand or narrow our search results, right? So you'll notice that in my um, screen here, and you can see the screen, yes, Arvi? With the search terms, yes? Okay, beautiful. Um, I've got them color-coded, right? So all, all, the, all the yellow things uh, are, that are highlighted yellow, those ones are the terms that relate to um, folks who are experiencing homelessness, right? The blue, the blue ones I've highlighted blue, those are the, the, the COVID terms, and the ones I've highlighted green are um, related to harm reduction, right? And so all of the things that are connected with the ORs in, in one set of brackets, so like the first one here in the yellow, these all get at the same idea. So anything that gets at the same idea, you would say OR, right? So I want an, a, an article that talks about the homeless, or the houseless, or people who are street involved, or people who are underhoused, right? So um, it doesn't matter that way which term they're using. It's if 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 one of those terms in the yellow is there, it's going to come back. Okay. Likewise with COVID or SARS-CoV-2, same thing with harm reduction or supervised consumption or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And so that that kind of expands the options, right? So we're not just looking for homeless. We're also looking for underhoused and, and, and so on. But we have to combine them together, right? So we want the concept of homelessness and the concept of COVID and the concept of harm reduction, right? So all, all three of those um, components have to be there. And that's what the ands do. They connect those together. And the brackets just keep it organized, right? So um, within one bracket is, is one color. Um, next set of brackets is another color last set of brackets is another color, okay? Um, you'll notice that I've got those asterisks again. Those are truncation. So if you look at homeless asterisks, it'll come back with homeless or homelessness, right? So anything um, in the spot of that asterisk doesn't matter. It'll still bring it back. And of the quotation marks, which Orvi used in her search as well, we'll look for the phrase. So rather than for the, look for the word street and the word involved, it will look for street space involved. Okay, so I feel like I've dumped a whole lot of information on you, but um, I'm just going to quickly copy and paste this into my PubMed, and you'll see what happens. So we put that in there, click on search, and we've got, uh, in somewhat small letters, it says 22 results, right? So we've got the first one. Um, a telemedicine, I'm going to say this wrong, buprenorphine clinic, sorry about that folks, um, in New York City, right? And you can see in this little snippet down here, um, the word homeless is in the abstract because they talk about homeless shelter staff, right? Um, so uh, that looks like that might be useful. We've got one a bit about um, and in Portugal, Lisbon's COVID-19 response, harm, harm reduction interventions for people who use alcohol and other drugs in emergency shelters. Um, and we can kind of keep going. We got stuff about, you know, homelessness and uh, harm reduction in the time of COVID in uh, Ireland. And like Orvi said, if any of these any of these look good, we can we can have a look at that when we click on the title. Alternatively, if we um, check the box off. Right, so I want that one, I want that one. I'm not really paying much attention, I'm just picking stuff. Um, I want that one, and I want that one. I can kind of put them aside for later. So I got this button here, it says send to. And I would say, I wanna put that on my clipboard. And the clipboard, um, it keeps track of, of anything that you send to it. And I believe it's, is it like 24 hours or is it shorter than that, Orvi? I am always wary because sometimes it's impacted by whether what else your computer is doing. Um, mm. So I try to always grab them before I go away from my computer, but I think they do advertise 24 hours. 
Right. Um, yeah. So that's that's probably best practice. But but if you wanted to do like another search for something else, you know, like you want to try different terms, or maybe you want you're not you want to look at you know the the impact of COVID on people um, who are experiencing homelessness um, and mental health. You could like do another search and change the terms, looking for mental health, and then add whatever you want to your clipboard. And then when you're done. Um, if you go to your clipboard, you can see there's five items selected. Um, great. Now, how do you get back to it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, clipboard five underneath the search box. If you click on that. Sorry, eight hours of inactivity. I take it back. Um, after eight hours, it will delete it for sure. Um, but it keeps track. See, they're always changing things on us. <laughs> Trying, trying to make us uh, look like liars here. Um, if you change your mind, you can remove things from the clipboard, right? Um, they've got this nifty uh, share thing like you see all the time on with online news articles and stuff. You can email uh, or tweet. Actually, here it's, it's just tweet and Facebook, and you can copy a link. Um, one handy thing is if you want to, you can select them all, and then you can use this email button here and email it to yourself. So if I click on email, I would put in my own email, I would say, well, here it defaults to everything, so that's that's fine. Um, and I can change that summary um, to abstract if I wanted to. And then I just, you know, check off that I'm I am not an I am I am an actual person, I am not a robot. I am and then send myself an email. Um, and then I can get those citations sent to me. Um, so if you find some things that are are of interest and they do not have those little like that free free PMC article attached um, aspect, you can email them to yourself and then send them on to us and say, um, I found these in PubMed, could you please send them to me? And then we will do that. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna have to skip ahead because I, I got ahead of myself here. Um, yes, so subject headings. Um, is I, I don't know if, some people really love subject headings and some people can't be bothered. Um, the the drawback to um, what kind of searching we were doing where we do uh, just some uh, keywords, it's, it's looking for the words, it's looking for them any, anywhere, but um, I had to come up with that big long list of all the possible ways that someone could talk about homelessness, right? And so if somebody's using a term that I'm not looking for, it's not going to come back. Um, so that's that's not great. Um, if I go back to the main PubMed, we've got this MeSH database, and um, MeSH stands for Medical Subject Headings. And the goal is to kind of get around that whole issue of having to think of every possible way to say something, right? So somebody um, actually has a list of these tags that they apply, and it's like, well, they talk about you know under un underhoused, and they talk about insecure housing and street involved and all these things, but the, the term that we are using for our tag is homelessness, so they attach homelessness. So regardless of what author's um, terminology is, it will all get the same tag, right? And so in theory, this makes it uh, easier to find stuff, right? Because someone has looked at it and said it's, you know, it's, it's about this, 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 and this, um, and then that that's that's handy, right? So if we go to the mesh database, we can look up what their term is. So if I type in homeless, oops, spelling counts, homeless, it's gonna give me some suggestions, right? So they have homeless persons, they have homeless youth, which is uh, a little bit more specific. Um, and then they've got, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> it's it looks like something unrelated to what I'm looking for, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and so we can say, "Aha! I want, I want this one." Um, the way c that PubMed is currently set up, it will actually. I'll click on it first, so you can see the de the the definition. Um, it will automatically search for the item you picked and anything more specific that's underneath it. And you can see we've got persons, we've got homeless persons, and then homeless youth, right? So if we click on homeless persons and say, yes, I want to search for homeless persons, it will look for homeless youth as well. And it's got a little bit of a definition here. So people who have no permanent residence, um, not including nomadic peoples, right? 
So on the side, we can add to the search builder, right? And say, okay, next one. Next one I want to look for is um, harm reduction. So harm reduction. Go. Okay, and so that one that one came up right away. There wasn't a whole lot of choice going on there. Um, so I can add this to search the search builder on the side again as well, and you'll see that it it defaults to and right. So I want homeless persons and harm reduction right. So both of those those subjects have to be present for the article record to be returned. Okay, if I want to keep going, I can look for COVID. So COVID. And maybe I can just add, Christine, um, mm -hmm. how important it is to read those um, the definitions that they provide because um, it takes a long time for PubMed to update its terms, mm -hmm. um, particularly for things that are culturally sensitive or just um, sensitive of the now. I think they still might be using, as an example, sexually transmitted disease instead of sexually transmitted infection. Don't mm -hmm. let that deter you. They're still, um, as long as you read the scope note, and if the note is inclusive of what you're looking for, um, then uh, then that's the term that you should use. And you could also supplement it then um, with your own keywords um, of the more sort of uh, appropriate term of the now. Um, mm -hmm. But just know that, yeah, it's really important to read your scope note. Absolutely. Thank you, Orvi. Um, now you'll notice for the COVID idea here like there there is a lot going on when i type in covid holy mackerel um so i i can see it's it's got a bit of a de definition right up front so that's handy right so i'm going to pick covid-19 and sars-cov-2 but i'm not really um concerned about testing myself in, in this particular search or vaccines or anything like that so um i can have a look and see if there's anything else that's relevant um They've got treatment stuff, vaccine stuff, um, stress syndrome. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but if I want those, I can say, okay, well, I want to add that to the search builder. And I set add it to the search builder. And you'll notice um, it automatically put or between them, right? So COVID-19 mesh or SARS-CoV-2 mesh. Um, and you can you can see in this box what what it's doing right? So when, once I'm happy, I can click on search PubMed and it's going to do the search. And in this case, it only gave me three. Um, and the reason for that is that because there's actually, you know, people who are looking at these articles, um, there can be a delay, right? It takes time. So the things that are like super brand new will not necessarily have a uh, subject heading attached. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well, right? So if we click on this one, we can see I've got similar articles and references. And then way down at the bottom, we've got what our mesh terms are, right? So we've got COVID-19, drug users. Um, again, maybe not the most um, now terminology, um, but it's what they use. Uh, homeless persons, humans, Portugal, SARS-CoV-2, right? Um, and this one was one of the ones that showed up in our other search as well. But because because this, this stuff is, is very current and uh, just coming out so quickly, um, only three of them were actually given tags. Okay. Um, how are we doing? Any, any questions coming through there, Orvi? No questions uh, that I see. Okay, everyone is just on it. Um, so, like I said, subject headings can be handy, um, but the, you know, they 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 take a while to be applied, and sometimes there's not um, a subject heading for something. Like um, return on investment um, is one that I've looked for in the past, and and there was no subject heading at the time. They might come up with one. Um, because you know ideas and and, and important things um, people talk about change, um, so it's 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 also <laughs> it's also evolving as is everything with PubMed. So it's just something to keep in mind, right? Okay, well, we did this part. So um, 
I think we actually managed to keep to time, Orvi. Isn't that amazing? Um, that is we, amazing because we get so excited <laughs> about sharing um, sharing the wonders of how to search PubMed um, and how to search in general. We mm -hmm. uh, often get a bit carried away. Yes. So, so we do have time for questions. If anybody has questions, um, I know it always feels like I'm talk talking really fast. Um, And if you, um, we can just reiterate again, uh, maybe as you're, you know, finding that question box in case you do have questions. Um, it's a lot of information. So we always post the recordings of our webinars online so you can always come back. And um, PubMed also uh, from that homepage, again, they have their tutorials and their quick little videos. So sometimes it's just like, oh, I remember when Christine showed me this and I don't quite remember how to do it. You can just watch their little video right away um, as a reminder. Um, and again, you can get really complicated and intense in PubMed, and you can just be really simple about it too. Um, mm -hmm. So jump right in, give it a try. And certainly if you have questions or if you're like, I did my best, I couldn't find what I was looking for, uh, you guys take over now. We're happy to, uh, to, to do that as well. Yes. Oh, I, I saw that we had a question. Um, so the the MyNet site, thank you for this question, by the way. Um, we have a box. So on the MyNet site, go, go there quickly. So PubMed. So this form is not secure. Well, that's not anything to worry about. Um, in theory, it will work the same way. So let's, let's, let's find, let's find out. Uh, I have to, confess, I generally just go directly to PubMed uh, rather than use the little box. Um, just because it's such a tiny box, I can lose track of what I've typed. So, yes, it did the same thing. Good question. You can't, you can't look up the, the mesh terms though. You'd have to, you'd have to know what those are um, or go, or go, or go. I'm sorry, you can't talk. Or go to PubMed to look those up. Okay, well, we thank everyone very much for attending today. Um, and be sure to check out next webinar, which is about preprints, which is a very hot topic uh, during, it, it is preprints, right? I think, I think it's actually the presentation um, oh, how to tell how to tell a story with your data. I'm so excited about both. I keep forgetting which is. <laughs> so we have two guest presenters in, next month, and then we'll learn about preprints. Um, yes. And yeah, so if you're interested in how better to present your data or information in a presentation, um, definitely join us next month to check that out. Yes, Any final you. thoughts, Christine? Um, just, you know, th thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we will be sending out um, slides and um, we'll also have a link to a, a form. Uh, you, can, you can fill out, give us your thoughts on the session. Um, we, we always want to hear what you have to say. Um, if I'm talking too fast, you can tell me I'm talking too fast. I'll try to work on it. Um, likewise, if you, if you have suggestions for things you would like to see, um, you can also um, either tell us in the form or send us an email. Okay. Thanks for coming. Have a great week, everyone.